All right, everyone. So we are continuing learning about e-commerce and WordPress, specifically basic to intermediate WordPress first. And uh, I had instruction number one, which uh, we don't need to do together because it's already been done for us in the room. We're going to start on number two. And then, so what we will do here is uh, we can also skip section one here because we've already got the WordPress software downloaded. Basically, we're going to start on number two, subsection two, right here. Uh, we need to set up a database. Now, remember I said previously, we are going to need to do this little annoying thing at the beginning of every class, which is to create a database, but then after a couple steps, then we've got WordPress ready, and that's what we're going to focus on. But we have to do this little step zero first, because every time you turn off this computer, your computer, it resets. It erases everything that you did for security purposes. So um, we are going to start with our uh, with our WordPress here where on the desktop you're going to see WAMP server. Do you see that purple W? Go ahead and click, double click WAMP server. When you double click it, nothing will pop up to tell you welcome to WAMP server. It'll just start to load up. And then on the bottom right corner, on the bottom right corner, do you see a green W? Yes. Yeah. So if you see a green W, that means we've got WAMP server running. Did everyone get the sign-in sheet? The pink sheet? So everyone should see a green W on the bottom right. That means that's our WAMP server. Um, instruction number one is telling you to download the software, to install it. But we've already got it on these computers. You just need to double click it, and then it appears on the bottom right. Once you see that green W on the bottom right, click on it. The WAMP server menu appears, and you will select localhost at the top. What WAMP server is, is our virtual server where we can create websites, WordPress websites, for example. So click on localhost there, and now you get this WAMP, WAMP server welcome screen. Can everyone get this? Do you have your WAMP server running? You can click on it and then click localhost at the top. Now, some of you, I notice it says something about remove extensions in yeah. Chrome. That's weird. I'm not expecting that. Just go ahead and click remove from Chrome. If that pops up, click remove. If it doesn't, just ignore it. Uh, for some reason, our computers here have some setting that they didn't quite set right. Here, I'll, I'll take that one. All right, so WAMP server here shows that um, we've got the software running. This is a virtual server where we can then create a website. Remember last week we had this and we had your project WordPress. It's no longer there because every time we turn off this computer it erases. So we have to do this step, these steps a few times. I mean we have to do these steps every time we come in but it's just a couple of steps and once we get the hang of it you'll be able to do it on your own quickly. But what we've got is here is a development environment. Our WordPress is only going to exist on your computer. It's not going to be live because usually WordPress is live. Anyone can go look at your WordPress site even while you're in the middle of working on it. So if we work on it on WAMP server, it'll be private only for you until we upload it. But the problem in our computers here is that every time we turn off the computer, it erases. So we have to follow our steps here again. Set up a database in WordPress. So basically by clicking on the W and going to localhost, it's just a web address, localhost, 
and then we've got PHP my admin which is which is the link on the bottom left this is what lets you create databases you notice it's just a link localhost slash PHP my admin that's in my notes so on the bottom left under tools click PHP my admin question no, we're going to do that together right now. Actually, we're going to create the database and re and bring our site back to life and together. Definitely. Um, we need a database, and then we need the software. So here's where we create the database. I've got. Um, if it asks you for a username or password, there it is, which is root and path and blank. It's not asking for a password, so, so we don't worry. Um, at the top, click on databases. So we've got databases up here. It's then asking for the for a name of a database. We can call this whatever we want. We can call it Kitty Cat. And it'll work. But just to be on the same track, I'm saying here we will create a new database called WordPress. So on that box type WordPress and then click create. So you should get that yellow confirmation that says we've got a database. You should see that it says WordPress on the left and WordPress down here. If it doesn't, you need to you need to fix that. That happened to a couple people last week. You thought you made the database, but you didn't. And you can confirm because you see it there and there, and a yellow pop-up happened. Okay, so next we need to put the WordPress software. We need to activate the WordPress software just like we did last week. Question. She, she, which would you create that already exists? Any reason that you does it already exist right there? Yes. yes. Then you're done. You did it right. No, she found. Did you create it twice? Or? Yeah, if you click it twice, it wants to create it again, but you already created it, so you already created it. Next, we need to put the WordPress software into the WAMP, the WAMP folder so that we can actually use this database. My instructions say go to the website, download it, and so forth, but we've already got it downloaded. Let's go look where we've got it on our computer. Minimize everything. And then um, open up computer window. Open up the computer window. Open up this time the local disk C, the C drive. Local disk C. And then you will see at the bottom WordPress. This is the WordPress software. We're going to copy this into the WAMP folder. So we'll, once you see that WordPress folder, right click it and then copy. Then double click WAMP folder. Then double click WWW folder. And then on the empty spot, right click paste. You should then pop up to tell you you're copying the software. It's about 18 megabytes. And that's what we're doing in the next step over here. We are copying our WordPress folder into the WW folder. Again, I give you these handouts because everything that I'm talking about is in these handouts. So if you're falling behind, look at the handout and the answer's probably there. If it still doesn't make sense, raise your hand and I'll help you out, of course. But we're putting it all together here so we can start our project again.
All right, so we've got the folder now of WordPress inside of the www folder, and now WAMP server can find it. If you go back to your window of uh, WAMP server, so I'm going to go back to my web browser and I'll go back to the address http colon slash slash localhost. Remember, localhost always takes you back to the main WAMP server welcome screen. So let's go back to that address. And once you go back to localhost, you will see at the bottom projects. Now it says that you've got a project here. So if you didn't put that folder <clears throat> into the WW folder, then WAMP server can't find it. So any project, any web, any folder of a project that you put into that WWW folder, WordPress will treat it like a website. So we put the software WordPress into the W folder. Um, we've created a database, and now we're going to install WordPress so that we so that our WordPress can communicate with the database. And the database is highly important. The database holds all your usernames and passwords and products and prices and the colors of your text and the size of your pictures, everything. Your whole website is your database. We created one with PHP my admin. Now we need to hook up the two together and then we can get started. So we do have to do these step zeros first before we can get into WordPress. And we have to do that because of the nature of our room. If you've got already a site on GoDaddy or Bluehost or Cox or whatever, you usually don't have to do this. They do it for you to some degree. But we have to do it here together like this because we're in an educational environment. Um, so, my next step... Yes? I'm sorry, but where is that WAMP server window? It's a web browser, and then you're just going to type the address localhost local up host. on the web browser, yes. So I don't go to the localhost on the uh, You could, whichever way you want to get to it. Uh, it's just a web browser address. Question? You can have two web pages as long as they're in separate folders. You've got one folder called WordPress and you've got another one called My Site, whatever. So then each one is in its own folder. Different name. The folder name has to be different. Yes. Sure. That'll work. Inside it could be the same, yes. Okay, everyone, just quick announcement. If you're helping each other, I ask you to do it quietly because you're going to distract everyone, please. Question. Um, I don't think my file is uploaded, so my WordPress basically says the page is not available. All right, so um, our address is going to be localhost slash WordPress. We've got a folder in the WW folder that we just put in there called WordPress. 
So our address here now on the web browser is localhost slash WordPress. We don't need any .com, we don't need anything like that because it's not a real website. It's not on the real internet. If it was localhost.com or .net, .biz, whatever, that's a real address. But here, because we're on our own localhost, we're on our own virtual server, it's simply localhost slash WordPress. And again, that's right in my notes. So did everyone get this screen here with, his, with multi languages? Yes? Question? All right, so what we're going to do on this screen is go through the process one more time of installing WordPress. And we're going to start our site one more time. All right, so here it's asking what uh, language you would like WordPress. Go ahead and click Continue. I'm going to choose the default English. It's going to ask us for some pieces of information. Just click Let's Go. And here on my notes, remember I'm on notes number two, step three. So it's asking me, uh, what's the name of my database? We created a database called WordPress. It's not that it found the database called WordPress. It's just that it's looking for a database called WordPress, and ours is called WordPress, so we're fine. If we had created a database called Kitty Cat, we would need to type the database name Kitty Cat. It would not know that we wanted the database Kitty Cat. We need WordPress. Username and password. My notes right here say that we're going to um, use um, root and no password. Yeah, that's the confusing thing. It's asking two different usernames, so be careful here. This username is for the database, which is root. And then this uh, password right here is blank. We're going to have no password. What about the one itself, or number two, where it's itself data instead of using the user? Say that again. Uh, this is the same one actually on step two up here this root and this blank is the same that we're using in step three actually database host localhost we're gonna get used to that every time I talk about localhost it always means that web address HTTP colon slash slash localhost because it's not a real website, it's on your local computer. Table prefix WP, that's fine. Don't worry about that. Click Submit. If you get an error message here, that means you don't have the right database. We created a database called WordPress, and if you called it something else like capital W WordPress, that's not the same as lowercase WordPress. If you call the database my site, 
Clearly that's wrong because we typed WordPress here. Click run the install. And now it's going to ask for information about the actual site. So another username. But this is the one that you can make up or follow my instructions which are recommending add a site title, anything you want, add a username, I'm recommending admin, and add a password of password, capital P. You can make up this site, it can be a real site, whatever, but I'm going to make up a site called Victor's Bakery. My username as per my notes, step 3G, is admin. Username is admin. And password, I'm going to type password with a capital P. You can make up a password here, but if you do, I don't know your password. I don't know how to log in with your password. If you follow my instructions, my password is password. Email, you can put a real email or not. Doesn't matter because this is a fake website. It's not real yet. If this was a real WordPress website, you would put in your email address there for retrieving your lost password, for example. But because this is not a real site on the internet, it it's not going to really do anything. I'm just going to put victor at victor.com. doesn't matter. Question? All right, so um, right here then, um, this is the one of the last steps to set up WordPress. And we'll click install, and it'll process that. And what's going to happen is it's going to connect our WordPress with our database. Now guess what? We're going to need to do this again next week, and then again next week, and then again next week. A variation of this every time, unfortunately, because these computers forget everything that you do when you turn them off. Now, we're not going to start over with a brand new blank, empty WordPress 
every time like we're doing now. At the end of the day, we will go through a process of saving our site and taking it with us. We didn't do that last week. So when we come back, we will be able to, what we're going to do at the end of the day is we're going to archive our site, and then next time we're going to resurrect our site. We're going to need to do some of these steps again, but not to start with a blank site again. Eventually, I don't want to start over and over on the same empty site. By the end of the day, though, we will save our project more permanently to take with us. We are going to need to do these steps a few times to kind of get up and running again, and then we get back to the to WordPress and we'll be fine. Question? <laughs> Yes, sorry about that. Um, if you, if I forgot to turn that on or off, the point of that is, if it was a real website, um, do you want the search engines like Google or Bing or whatever to find your site? I forgot to turn it off. It doesn't matter again because it's a testing site. If it was a real site, we would need to decide: Do I want the search engines to find me? Yes or no? If I turn it off, then it's you know, don't let the search engines to find me. I forgot what I left it on, but it doesn't matter because it's a test site. Let's click login. And then here you're going to log in with the username and password we just made a moment ago, which is if you followed my instructions is admin, password, capital P. So go ahead and log in. So after success, click log in and log in with the username and password you just made. If it didn't work, you'll have to start over and this retrieve won't work because it's a testing site. So you go ahead and click log in. And now it'll take me to my WordPress dashboard. So we do need to do a variation on these steps again next time, but we'll do it again together and then eventually you'll get so good at it I won't even have to show you up here. You do it yourself. So did everyone get the dashboard? Alright, so the dashboard is our main site here. All of the steps we did was, was basic administration well, not basic, but I mean basic in the sense that it's the foundation of everything. It's like this campus is built on a foundation. We need that basic foundation to build this building. WordPress is the building, and the foundation of setting up that, word, that database and installing WordPress, that's the foundation. Once that's done, now we're going to spend all of our time in WordPress, which is not as complicated as databases and login names and all of that. So everyone has your dashboard. Let's do this. On the top right corner, hover your mouse where it says Howdy Admin. Hover your mouse there and click Log Out. I'm currently using this web browser, Google Chrome. Go ahead and close your web browser too. I'm going to shut it all down. And now, on your desktop, let's or your taskbar here, let's open Firefox. Because the question always comes up, I lost my page, how do I get back to it? It's in my notes, of course, but how do I get back to it? I'll show you right now. Open up your web browser, open up a Firefox, and then on my notes, it tells you that you can always get back to your dashboard by going to HTTP, colon, slash, slash, localhost, slash, WordPress, slash WP admin. Let's go back to that address, press enter, log in, just like we did 30 seconds ago. But the point of this is to show you this is how you can always get back to it. And I wrote it in my notes so that you have always a way to get back to your site. So let's go back to localhost slash WordPress slash WP dash admin. <clears throat> Log in with admin and password.
Okay, so this takes us back to a brand new empty WordPress. Everything that we did last week is gone. That's okay. We're going to start again this time for real and then at the end of the day we're going to take this project with us so that we don't have to start all over next time. Um, what I want to do is I want to remind you, or actually you remind me, it was only a week ago. I'm looking at the dashboard. How do I look at my site like a regular person? Anyone remember that? It's in my notes also. Hover over your name of your site and then click visit site. Now we can look at it like a regular person. And if I want to go back to the dashboard, I hover over the name of my site again, and then dashboard. Or an even faster way, if you just click the name of your site, it'll take you to the front end or the back end. You don't even have to select. Just click the name of your site, and it toggles you between front end, which is what people will see, and back end is what you will see as the admin. So that's a shortcut. Um, previously, we had looked a little bit at uh, some settings and such. Go back to the previous videos to get that info. We looked at a little bit of posts. We'll look at more posts, but today I want to compare with pages. Um, we had posts previously, which were basically for the blog, and then pages, which are for static screens, like an about page, a contact page, and so forth. So hover over Pages and click Add New. <coughs> Add New. And let's say this is our site, Victor's Bakery. I'm going to be selling cupcakes online, cookies, uh, pies, whatever. I've got an online business to sell baked goods. One of the pages I want to have is an about page. And as I've said previously, um, I teach this class and then I teach other classes that relate, such as an SEO class. You've built a great website, you're not getting any traffic, SEO, search engine optimization. How do you get traffic to your great website? So one of the things about SEO is you want to be a legitimate business and legitimate businesses have some sort of about page, some sort of contact page. Because the spammers don't. The spammers are going to sell you these fake products and there's going to be no way to get your money back, no way to call and get help. And the search engines look at so many factors to rank you, to put you on the first page of results compared to your competitors. And one of the things is to be professional and legitimate, you need an about page. So we're going to create, we're going to add a brand new page. Title, we will call it About. You might say, what about About Us? About me? About the company? I'll, I'll show you this. Go ahead and type actually About Us. Notice it's regular spelling with regular capitalization and such. Click inside of the, the main editor here. And it automatically creates an address, website, blah, 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 slash, about us. Okay, so it created, a, it created a file, it created a web address, but remember this is a fake website, it doesn't exist for real on the internet, called about us. It is becoming more and more common and the search engines are looking at this. Do you have a page called about? Not about us, not about me, not about the company, not about Victor's Bakery San Diego. It's looking for simply about. So, okay, I want to call the page about us or about the company, but I want the web address to simply be about. Do you think there's any way to fix that? Kind of. Click on edit. So, Let's click on edit and simply let's make it say about. That can be, the title up here can be whatever. But the web address here 
the search engines are showing or recommending to have that basic name there <coughs> about. When we do the contact page, same thing. I can call it contact the company, but my address should still be nicely succinct contact. So notice we can simply edit. On about us information, we should have real about the company information. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time working on this. That's more for the SEO class. But what you want to think about creating a legitimate presence online, uh, because the spammers don't have a legitimate presence. The spammers have fake text or text that they stole from another website. You want to have your own unique real text about your company. And in the SEO class, we go into more detail. But basically, here you would think about writing about the company. San Diego-based um, family-friendly bakery in the heart of Eastlake, California, etc., etc. This sentence here is very dense in that it hits a lot of keywords. Part of SEO is crafting your keyword strategy. What are the words that people are going to search for? When you search for something on the internet, are you simply typing restaurant? No, you're probably typing specifically Italian food restaurant. Maybe even more specifically Italian food restaurant 91914. Maybe even you're doing what more and more people nowadays are doing is on their mobile device. They're typing the search and the mobile device has GPS. GPS will then find a location based on what you're at. And then more people are also uh, doing the, the technique where you go like this. What's a good Italian food restaurant nearby? Okay, so I asked it a normal human question, and the thing was smart enough to then tell me locations that are one mile away and that have four and five stars and reviews on Yelp and so forth, so I can make a decision. That's the art and the science of the magic of SEO. And this is one little tip of that, one little touch of it. Writing content, thinking in terms of how people will find you. So if you have a website and you're not getting a lot of traffic to it, you probably have to do a bit of an overhaul on your content. Am I creating content on my site that people are searching for? Um, with keywords and so forth. And that's for the other class where we talk more in detail. But for this class, we are creating a page where we would write a couple sentences, add some pictures, etc. about our website. Yes? Why did you use um, San Diego Base as a hyphen? Just, that's just grammatically correct, because uh, if I remember my English class from high school, um, this modifies San Diego, so San Diego based, right? Any English majors that can tell me, yes or no? San Diego comma based? Not quite grammatically correct, because I'm saying that it's based in San Diego, just like family friendly. Family friendly is a hyphenated word going together. So. The search engine won't quite pay attention to that dash and such. It'll pay more attention to the actual words. And if people are searching for San Diego bakeries, there's my keyword, San Diego and bakeries. If people are searching for family bakeries in Eastlake, there's those keywords. So for the other class, we go into more detail. But this is something to start to think about, creating pages on our site of the keywords that people might search for. That's why blogging is so important nowadays, because blogs could be full of keywords. I've got a blog about a recipe, key lime pie. I've got a blog about the history of vanilla. I've got a blog about, you know, gluten-free, uh, gl gluten-friendly alternatives for the Super Bowl. I'm typing all of these blogs of people searching for content that people can find and get me more traffic. Yes? Can you promote those SEO keywords? Is there like a way to go about coming up with those? Or do you kind of brainstorm? 
couple of ways. One is you brainstorm yourself and you write them down and you think like someone searching. And you can also log into the search engines to their to their webmaster tools, which are free, and you can look up, you can do research on the search engines directly to get results about this keyword gets a lot of hits, this keyword doesn't. So either way, if I don't know where to start, I just write a bunch of keywords and start using them. A little more savvy, and in the SEO class we go into the search engines to do the research. Um, here, obviously, I could write much more, I could add bold and pictures and video, whatever. Um, and we've got on the right side some page attributes of a parent. We'll talk about that in a moment. And a featured image. So we can attach a picture to that page. Um, for practice, we didn't add any pictures last time. This time we'll add a picture. On the bottom right, featured image, click set featured image. This is sort of like a preview picture for that page. It'll make more sense when we do products. And it says upload a file or look in your media library. We have nothing in the media library. We've got a brand new empty WordPress. So we'll have to upload something. Click upload files. Select files. And our computers here have a few sample pictures. On the left side, on the left panel here, scroll to the top and you will find pictures. On the left panel, go to pictures and then you will see sample pictures. Double click sample pictures. And then you've got a few pictures to choose from, whichever one, fine. Uh, I'll go with penguins. Click penguins and then click open. We have all of these details about a picture that I'll get to a little later. Just go ahead and click Set Featured Image. And now this page has a picture attached to it, a preview picture. Click Publish. And now let's visit site. When I say that, I simply mean hover over the name of your site, visit site. So I've got Hello World and such that was built in. Where's my About page that I just created? I don't see anywhere to click anywhere to go to my About page. This is oftentimes a stumbling block for beginners in WordPress. We need to define a menu. It doesn't know to show our pages. We'll do that right after the break. It's 1.26. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 1.36 to get our bearings. And when we come back, we're going to make a menu. We're going to change our theme. We're going to do all this cool stuff. We'll be back at 1.36.